As I said, thanks for joining us. Those of you that uh, aren't aware of Behringer Associates, we are an IT services provider uh, that's based in Pensacola, New Jersey. And uh, we have three practices within our business. Uh, one is our network services practice. Uh, we do IT outsourcing, uh, where we maintain the networks of clients across the country. Uh, we also have a Microsoft CRM practice, where we implement the Microsoft CRM solution. And uh, our third area is uh, unified communications, which uh, is what we're talking about today with Microsoft Link. And we also do a lot of voice over IP and, and business telephone systems. So you can visit us at www.behringer.net for more information. We're going to go ahead and get started. So today we're going to take a look at Microsoft Link, a great product from Microsoft that actually has been around for a while under a couple different names. And uh, it's, a, it's a collaboration and also a unified communications product. So what does that mean? Well, if you think about how you communicate today, uh, either internally or with external people like customers and suppliers and so forth, um, you may choose to call somebody. You may email them. You may instant message them. You may reach them on social media, and probably a couple other ways. And unfortunately, if you don't reach them on one of those methods, uh, you probably move on to the next one. So if you send somebody an email and you don't get a reply, then you probably pick up the phone and, and call them. And you could dial a variety of phone numbers. You could call their office. You could call their cell phone, and so forth. So unified communications looks to take all those different methods of, of collaboration and, and communication and bring them into a single interface. And that's essentially what unified communications does. So Microsoft Link is a program, obviously, by Microsoft uh, that does just that. It brings in a lot of different ways that you can collaborate and communicate with people into one single interface. So here on my screen, uh, you should be seeing my Microsoft Link client. And we're just going to go through some of the functionality here uh, of Microsoft Link as a whole. First, uh, there are two ways that you can use the Microsoft Link software. Uh, the first is it's a part of Office 365. And Office 365 is a hosted software as a service solution from Microsoft. Uh, the other uh, items that are a part of Office 365 are things like SharePoint Online, Microsoft uh, Exchange Online, and even the Office Suite, which is Word, Excel, Outlook, PowerPoint is also available to you via this online subscription model. So you don't really have any software uh, at all to buy. And uh, you have very little to install and maintain. So on my machine, I have the Microsoft Link client installed. Um, but other than that, there really isn't anything else to install or maintain. Everything's running uh, up in the Microsoft data center up in the cloud. Okay. So when I'm connecting here uh, through Microsoft Link, it's actually connecting up to Microsoft servers in the cloud, as are all the other people that are in my contact list here that are part of uh, Behringer Associates. The other way to deploy Microsoft Link, uh, usually meant for larger organizations, is an on-premise solution. And that does require a number of different servers. Uh, and it does require some fairly intensive uh, installation and configuration of the software. Um, at that point, uh, it is uh, running on on premise at your location or in your data center. And uh, you do eliminate the monthly fees associated with uh, the use of the product uh, as you own it. Uh, but you would be paying maintenance or software assurance on that software so that you can update it going forward. The Office 365 product is certainly a great value by Microsoft. Um, the pricing starts at about $6 per user per month. And uh, that's really uh, the only fee associated with the, uh, with the Office 365 product. And there are different levels to the product, depending on what you need. Um, and I encourage you to go to office365.com or contact us at Behringer Associates if you have any, uh, any questions on the subscription models for Office 365. OK, so what does this great technology do? Uh, we use this internally. And uh, quite honestly, it's revolutionized the way that we work internally. So uh, we have mid-20s in terms of number of employees. And uh, we have employees that are based out of different locations. And we also have a lot of employees that work remotely from customer sites or even from home offices at times. So we're, we're geogra geographically dispersed at Behringer Associates. And it's very helpful to be able to look in a single interface and see uh, who I'm able to communicate with and what their status is. So in my link client here, the first uh, item up the top here is my current status. So you can either type in your status, uh, as I have here, 
or it will actually read from your Outlook calendar and show people your status uh, as it is in your Outlook calendar. So if I scroll down through my list here, you can see that uh, people are in meetings, there are people that are available, and there are people that are offline or uh, not connected, which uh, on vacation or traveling or something like that. And uh, as I said, that re is reading from their Outlook calendars or also from their manual status that they're giving it uh, at the top of the link client here. Okay. I can also choose to set my uh, status here to busy or unavailable or even do not disturb. Uh, I can also set it to appear away, which means I would appear as not being logged into Microsoft Link. Okay, so that's a simple drop down. Uh, next down here is the uh, the, the kind of upper portion of the uh, the software here, and you can uh, search for a contact by name, first name or last name, or even a portion thereof. Um, and then you can also look at things like activity feeds, which is uh, is pretty neat. So in here, it's showing me some feeds. From, it, from people that I have as a, um, a friend, so to speak, in my link software. So we can see John Morehouse here, who uh, looks like he is also on the, uh, the webinar with us as he just changed his status, as you see here. Um, and I can see uh, these feeds for people that I have in my contact list. So I can see uh, Ted on our marketing team is in our webinar today. Um, and Joe Foreman is uh, performing a network review and, uh, and so forth. Okay, so it just kind of keeps you up to date with what's happening with the people that uh, uh, that you're communicating with. And then finally, converse, conversations in here um, are a history of the instant message conversations uh, that you've had with people over time. So they do get logged uh, in the link client, and you can refer back to them. They also get logged in your Outlook uh, interface under the conversations area of Outlook. Okay, so as you're communicating with somebody uh, via instant message and so forth, then it's recording those uh, for you to refer back to at uh, any point in the uh, future. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to my contacts. And I have a number of different ways that I can reach out and, and communicate with people. And I've asked John Morehouse on our uh, business development team to uh, join us today for some demonstrations. So you can see there's a drop down here next to each contact. And um, when I drop that down, I have the uh, different ways that I can uh, communicate with John. So the first is an instant message conversation. So I'll just go ahead and, uh, and do that. I'll double click on him. And now I am chatting with uh, John via instant message. And John will reply. And you see his status here as well, waiting for a response, whether he's typing, um, and so forth. If John doesn't reply in a few minutes, then it'll automatically stop this conversation, and it will email John a uh, missed um, conversation email. And basically, that um, tells John that uh, I tried to reach him, uh, but was un unavailable. He was unavailable or didn't answer, so to speak. So he would get a standard email in Outlook that would let him know that he's, uh, he's missed a uh, potential conversation. Okay can also, as part of this conversation, add other people um, to the conversation as well. Um, so if I wanted to bring somebody else in on our conversation, then I can just uh, invite them as well. Okay, so let's uh, pick Ted here since he's on the line with us. And uh, now all three of us are communicating, and, and everything that I type, uh, both John and, uh, and Ted would see as well. Um, so it's a nice group-based a conversation which, uh, as I said, will be recorded and saved in Link as well as in Microsoft Outlook as well. Okay, so thanks guys. I'll go ahead and close this down. So nothing really new uh, there in terms of uh, the way that you're communicating. Uh, nothing revolutionary. I'm sure everybody's seen instant messaging before. Where Link really um, shows its strength is in the audio and video areas um, of communication. So. If I pull this down, I'm going to go ahead and call uh, John via a link call. And a link call is a voice-based call. And typically, it's going to use the microphone and speakers that are connected to your machine. Um, or you can actually uh, plug a headset into your PC as well. Um, and they're really pretty inexpensive. Uh, you can pick them up at um, the electronic stores for geez, around $15, I think. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, call John. You'll hear it ringing here. And then uh, if John answers, we'll be uh, in a voice phone call, which may cause a little bit of feedback here. Hello, John. Hey, Dave, how are you? I am good. How are you, sir? Very well. Thank you very well. Good. So I hope everybody can hear uh, John as I'm uh, kind of...